Hi guys, it's Vishnu here from Chess Simplicity. I hope you're all doing fine. So it's been a long time since I posted a video. So it's a continuation from previous videos. I was covering tactics in the previous videos, basic tactics. So the last video was on defensive pieces and this video it's going to be on pin. What is a pin? So theoretically speaking, pin is a very common tactic in chess. And most players, almost everybody, you know, use it, make use of this tactic. So what is a pin? So there are two kinds of pin. One is an absolute pin and one is a relative pin. Pin in general means you cannot move the pin piece because you are revealing a threat of a, you are revealing a threat of a higher valued piece than that of the pin piece. Or in the case of absolute pin, you just cannot move that piece because your king will be under check. So take a look at this example. Here you can see that you have a white rook on f4, black knight on f7, and a black king on f8. So the white rook has so the white rook has put the knight on f7 on a pin. Now it's black to move, but you cannot move this knight because it is illegal to do so because you are revealing a check towards the black king. So black cannot move his knight. It's called a, this such a such a pin is called an absolute pin where where your piece is pinned to your own king and you cannot move that piece because it is because your king will be under check. Uh, so this is a case of an absolute pin. So the only way to get rid of this pin is either to get rid of this rook if you have another piece to capture this rook. Say you have, you have a pawn on g5, a black pawn. You can capture this rook with a black pawn and then you can move the knight. Or you have to move the king and then move the knight. So this is called an absolute pin. Let's take a look at another example which explains what is a relative pin. Now take a look at this example. In the previous case, you couldn't, you couldn't move the knight because it is illegal to do so. It was illegal to do so because you are keeping your king under check. Now in this case, you are allowed, you can move the knight, but you will lose your queen at the cost of losing a higher valued piece. So obviously you don't want to lose your higher valued piece. So what they do is get rid of the bishop or move your queen to some other square so that you can come out of the pin and then move the knight. So that's what normally people do. So this is called as a relative pin. That is. The pin piece, you are pinning your piece to a higher valued piece or at least another piece of the same value. For example, if you have a bishop or a knight on h7, you can still call this a pin. But typically, when you have a higher valued piece, you normally call it a pin. So this is called a relative pin. Where you can move your knight, you are allowed to do so, but you will lose your queen. There is a threat to the queen. There is a threat to the queen on h7 by the bishop on e4. And the knight on g6 is pinned to the queen on h7. Let's take a look at more examples. Now, take a look at this example. It's white to move. And you can see that these two pawns are pinned. The pawn on h6 is pinned and the pawn on g7 is also pinned. The attacking pieces are the bishop and the queen. And the, it is an absolute pin because you are pinning these two pawns against the king. So white to move and it's mate in two. So the, it's the most queen takes at six check. Now you cannot capture this queen with your pawn on g7 because there is a pin against the king. It's an absolute pin. So the only way is to move the king to g8. But after you do that, it's made. And queen takes e7 checkmate. Now, solve this by yourself. I'll pause the video for 10 seconds. Find a way to win the black bishop on g7. How do you win this bishop? It is pinned against the king and the attacking piece is the rook. Pause the video for a few seconds and try to find out the solution. 
Okay, in case you have found out, the correct move is f6 here, attacking the bishop once again. So, now you cannot take this pawn on f6 because the king is under check by the rook. So, white black pen either moves king or play some other move like h5, but less than you can lose the black bishop on g7, and it's clearly winning for white. So here it's white to move. You can see that I'm black is also threatening mate in one for white, and at the same time, white has also some very good moves to attack the black king, and it's white's turn to move. So black king is really in danger here. So the correct move is it's mate in three here. The current move is knight takes c6 check. So black cannot move to b8 or a6. b8 he cannot move because it is controlled by the knight on c6. He cannot come to a6 because it is controlled by the rook on b6. And he cannot take this knight because the rook on c7 has pinned the b7 pawn against the king, so it's an absolute pin. So the only move black has got is to move his king to a, the only move. But after he does that, it's forced mate into rook to a6 check. Once again, the king cannot move to b8 because the knight is protecting that square. And king, you cannot hide this check with any other piece of your choice. So the only way is to capture this rook. But if you do so, rook take rook comes to a7 and this checkmate. You cannot capture this rook because it is protected by the knight on a c6. And you can't move to b8 because it is once again protected by the knight on c6. So there are some cases where you can move the pin piece, but in such a case, you should you should also create threads on your own. That is, if you have, say that you have a relative pin in a position, you are under a pin, you can move the piece. But if you are moving the post, it should also thread your opponent of a piece of higher value, or it should also thread some, or, or it should also create some mating threads. In such cases, you are allowed to move your pin piece. For example, take a look at this game. It's a short game. e4, e5, bishop c4, d6, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, bishop to g4. Now the bishop on g4 has pinned the knight on f3 against the queen. So I hope by now you know what this kind of pin it is. Can anyone tell me what this pin is? Pause the video and just let me know. So here, this is a relative pin, the knight because you lose a queen. But here, white is playing a daring move. Knight takes e5, allowing himself, allowing the opponent to capture his white queen. It's a trap actually. White is expecting that black should capture his queen. If we, if this happens, it is made in two. Bishop takes f7 check. You cannot capture this bishop by the king because it is protected by the knight on e5. You cannot come to d7 because you will be under check. So the only move is king to e7. But then you have knight to d5 check mate. You can't come to f6 because it is protected by the knight on d5. You can't come to e6 because of the bishop. You can't go to d7 because of the knight. You can't go to e8 because of the bishop. And you cannot capture this bishop also because it is protected by the knight. So it is checkmate. So the right move here after knight e5 is actually knight takes e5. Knight to e5 is actually a blunder. So the right move here is knight takes e5. And black is clearly winning. 
Let's take a look at one final example. Uh, now, this game was played in the World Championship match between two great chess champions, Max Yu and Paul Keres, two famous grandmasters. So, they were in time trouble, meaning time pressure. That is, uh, they had very few sets, a uh, few, very few, very less time left on the clock to finish the game. In fact, Paul Keres was playing black and Max Yu was playing white. So, Paul Keres found a tactical combination despite having only seconds on his clock. So, here the tactical move is rook takes c1. Now, the problem for white is he cannot take with his rook as well as with his queen. For example, let's say if he takes with his queen, then it would be checkmate. Now, if he takes it with his rook, black can put his knight on f3, check, double check, it's a fork. The king and the queen are both threatened by the knight on f3. You cannot capture this knight with your pawn because it is an absolute pin. Queen on g4 has pinned the g2 pawn against the white king on g1. So the only way it is to move the king either to h1 or to f1 or to f2. Say he moves to h1, then you can capture the queen. And it's clearly winning for black. But in the game, what happened was white played h3 and black played queen to g3. And after a couple of moves, black went on to win the game. But there is a better move than queen g3 here. And that correct move is knight to f3 check. So here, there is double pin here. You can't capture this knight on f3 with your rook on f1 and with your pawn on g2. Because it is under pin. You can't capture the the knight with your pawn because the queen is checking the king. You can't capture the knight with your white rook because the black rook on c1 is checking the king. So you have only two ways left. Either to move the king to h1 or to f2. If you move to h1, that is checkmate here. It takes f1. So the only move is king takes f2. But then you will lose heavy lots of material after king takes the king moves to f2. Rook takes f1 check. King takes f1 and knight d to check it's completely new. Knight d2, you cannot take your queen, the black queen, because your king is under check by the knight. So, if say if you're making it still, it's knight d2 check. 6 e4 and it's clearly winning because white has lost a lot of material and there's nothing that it can do about it. So that's it guys. I hope you have understood what is pin. So that I'll, I'll once again repeat it. Pin is a situation in which you cannot move your piece because without revealing a threat to a higher value piece from, by, from your opponent or you simply cannot move the piece because it is pinned against your king and it is illegal to do so. So there are two kinds of pin. When it is pinned against your own king, it's called as an absolute pin. You call it a relative pin because when 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 the pin piece is shielding a piece of higher value, typically a piece of higher value, but also when you shield a piece of the same value, you can still call it a pin theoretically. But typically you call it a pin when it is a piece of higher value that you're shielding. So I hope you understood what a pin is and I'll put more videos regarding tactics in the future. And if you like this video, and do, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And please put in the comments like what exactly you expect from me so that I can put more videos related to that. And that's it guys. I'm Vishnu once again from Chess Simplicity. Signing off. Thanks a lot. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.